House Speaker Denny Hassett, the former wrestling coach in high school, stood up and said, I am going to ask Reverend Wright to pull aside. And he did do exactly that. And it was announced tonight that a Catholic priest has been installed as the new House Chaplain the first time in 215 years. Father Douglas, for, for, for the Daniel Coughlin, uh, he's a vicar of priest out of the Archdiocese of Chicago. You know, we also broke every record in television history with the Nothing Sacred boycott that we conducted. And unlike uh, the people who are now saying Dr. Laura should be taken off the air before she gets on, we were called all kinds of names for it. But that's okay. 37 sponsors were killed as a result of our effort to get that NVIDIA show off the air. The Simpsons, we made the point on that, too. And they said, you, won't, you can go after the Jews, you can go after the Muslims, you can go after the Baptists and Presbyterians, leave the Catholics alone, because we sent an unmistakable message. At, in fact, NBC just recently canceled putting on a show the last day because of the efforts of the Catholic League. We've gotten CDs retired voluntarily without coercion. We don't have to go to the government to get what we want. We use, we use the pi private pressure. And one of the things that I am most proud of, and some of you in this room, I'm very proud of you too, because you were there with me, when we went against Corpus Christi, the gay play, we had 2,000 people in the streets. And the other side, with their stupid little balloons from people from the American way, 300 people. Oh, no, the clock is ticking. The cultural clock is ticking, Christopher, and it's not going your way anymore. Mr. Hitchens, you will have six minutes for your closing statement. Uh, thank you, Father. Well, if I understood um, Dr. Donahue correctly just a moment ago, um, he seems to have come over to my side of the, at least the formal part of the motion this evening, since it is my contention that religion is unusually privileged in this country uh, by the cultural elite and the political and the intellectual and academic elite, too. Now we read of a string of new triumphs, including um, I think uh, a bad time for Bart Simpson and um, uh, some, some kind of papist in the well of the house. I mean, isn't this all going your way? Next you know, next you know they'll have under God on the money um, and in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I rest my case. It's always seemed to me quite preposterous to hear this self-pity from Roman Catholics about what actually is a church pretty much triumphant, not to say militant. I mean, look, it was, it is, I know it's true uh, that there was a time when people didn't like Irish Americans, and they didn't like Catholic Americans, and often confused the two. But now, the Kennedy family is a celebrity family, and, and everybody loves them. And everybody loves them, and they're your problem, and not mine. Um, but I think we can dispose of that under the rubric of, is this a great country or what, actually? <laughs> Now, rather than reply to the extremely uh, cheap suggestions made about, I mean, you can probably tell from, from something about me that I wasn't born here either, um, but was born in an island next to Ireland, a neighboring island. It was mentioned a couple of times. Rather than reply to the rather cheap um, uh, assertions that were made about that, I'll reply to them in someone else's behalf, namely my friend John Cornwell, who was mentioned earlier. And I feel it's my turn to defend him since he's not here. Um, John Cornwell is as unlike me as an Englishman as it's possible to get. He was at Ampleforth School, which is the sort of, I don't know, the, I don't know what you'd call it here, the, uh, the Loyola of uh, English uh, uh, public schools. He takes his church and his adherence, his, his, he's a communicant and devout member of the Roman Catholic Church, and takes his adherence to it, took it, so nearly to the, he only just um, avoided, and it wasn't by my uh, pleading with him either, um, uh, taking the vows that would have made him a priest. He, he's, um, it, is, it is also true, and I'll, I'll restate it because it was denied, and denied in a confusing manner, um, that he was allowed uh, tremendous access to the Vatican archives. And it's true because he had, on the, his previous visit to those archives, which had been open to him before, written a very stern and rather brilliant book in defense of insinuations made against the church and against uh, the polity in Rome that it had murdered the previous pope. You may remember there was that outbreak of surreptitious reporting at one point. John Cornwell put all that to rest with the help of the archives. That's why he was trusted to do what he did about Pope Pius. And that's why what he has found is so 
annihilating and why it's so dishonest not to pretend that this is a crisis for those who believe that the Pope is or was or could be the Vicar of Christ on Earth because here's what this Vicar of Christ did do and I'll mention only a couple of the things but this Vicar of Christ did tell Heinrich Brüning, the leader of the Catholic Center Party in Germany to dissolve his party to give up having a Catholic Center Party and to, and to join and vote for the accession of the National Socialists and of Hitler specifically as Chancellor. This Vicar of Christ on Earth also did make it a mandate that every German bishop celebrate Hitler's birthday every year from the pulpit. It is a tremendous testimony, it seems to me, to the, to the unease with which uh, the cultural elite approaches church matters that to this day, I haven't read a review of this book or a discussion of its incredible findings. You, you have not lived, ladies and gentlemen, if you believe in the dialectical principles that the Good Father was kind enough to, uh, to reiterate to us in his opening. You have not submitted yourself to a dialectical test as Catholics, if, and I gather there are some of you here. If you have not, if you have not exposed yourself to John Cornwell's book, um, I'm closing on my time. Um, the big difference between us is this. It's nothing to do with the particular depredations of Rome. Um, it's certainly nothing to do with the particular depredations of Bob Jones University. And like uh, I should perhaps say for myself, and as, as I could also say for John Cornwell, that he and I have both opposed very strongly British policy towards partitioned Ireland, which involved writing anti-Catholic laws into the statute books. Uh, we've both opposed the laws in Britain that say that, uh, for example, no member of the royal family can legally marry a Roman Catholic. And we both oppose the Guy Fawkes celebration, which celebrates the lynching of a Catholic, and so on, and the strain of vulgar sectarianism that is and remains in, in um, British imperial uh, life. Um, and I've, I've written myself, I was actually the first to write about the connection between Ian Paisley's thuggish, murderous sectarianism and the, and the Bob Jones University's uh, down-home uh, racist version of it. So it was particularly nasty, but since Mr. Donnie, who I do know, reads my stuff, I don't know why, but I know he does, uh, for him to give you the opposite or a contrasting impression. But the difference is this, and it's a major difference. I do not believe that I was created, and I don't believe I was created sick and then commanded to be well. I just choose not to believe it. I don't think it's a plausible proposition. I don't think that it's pl plausible to say that you hate the sin and love the sinner when you talk like Mr. Donahue does about homosexuals, and I think it's casuistry anyway, because who really goes around saying, I don't like rape, but I love those rapists? I think the religion gets a free pass in making moral casuistry of this kind. I think it is possible. I'm, I may not be the best example of it, and I did flicker a bit with enthusiasm when the alcohol and tobacco lobbies were mentioned a moment ago. Uh, if, you, if, you'd, if you'd thrown in firearms, you'd have had me all together. Um, I may not be the best example for it, but it is possible and probably necessary that people lead, lead ethical and moral lives without claiming uh, the solipsism of uh, divine protection. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hitler. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens. Thank you, Dr. Donahue. Thank you very much for your company this evening. Thank you very much.